Today is July the 3rd, 2006. This is John Wickland, the interviewer from St. Mary's Parish, interviewing Sister Lawrence Ann Scheidler. Okay, do you want to try to, shall we just try to go through this? Yeah. We don't really have to follow this. But well, but. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, when did you, how long were you in the parish before you went to religion? I was in, it was uh, 12 and a half years. Uh, we came in 1936, September, September and I 30, entered 30. in February of 49. 49, okay, uh -huh. so you remember quite a lot of the parish then. Yes, okay. I guess so. Um, when we moved there, it was uh, from Martinsville, Indiana, and then when we moved to Muncie, and uh, that was a little town of 5,000. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Muncie seemed like a pretty big uh, town to me. Mm -hmm. I was just, uh, well, I was 10 and a half at the time. Mm -hmm. So uh, it seemed like a pretty big town. And uh, it, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I thought it was, you know, quite a friendly place. I made friends at school at Burris. And, so you and, went to Burris? Yes. Uh -huh. Now, you lived near the church, did you? Oh, yes, we did, just a block away, which my mother was thrilled to death about because no. she could walk over there whenever she was able for mass, right. you know, in the morning. Yeah. And uh, we could walk to school. And yeah, right. Well, so, yeah. Yes, because at the time we didn't have a car. Somebody had run into Daddy and wrecked our car. And, and uh, so we were without a car at that point. And uh, Your father was probably one of the few Catholics on the faculty. Oh, people. definitely, yes. Uh, yes, it was... Uh, uh, but, uh, uh, Dr. La Follette was uh, the chair. Yes, and he, you know, he, Daddy had gone there to teach for the summer, and he had just gotten his doctorate degree. And and uh, when did he start? Do you remember? Pardon? When, when did when did your father start teaching? You well, know? For, you oh, know, the permanent position in the fall of forty of four of thirty six. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, and uh, so. Um, I, um, you know, as far as my impressions, I, I thought it was, a, you know, a really nice town. I had uh, no problem making friends at Burris, and and uh, it just all seemed big to me. <laughs> and, uh, Did you go to high school? At, yes, I went Burris, to Burris, Burris uh, all the school. way through from sixth grade on. And uh, they didn't have religious education then, did they? Separate. Uh, uh, at the Perry. Yeah, right. Well, just a catechism on a catechism. Sunday. Yeah, before Mass, Father Sear would, uh, you know, have, we'd have our little catechism books and, and uh, we had our instructions there. And You were confirmed there then? Were you confirmed at St. Mary's? No, I had been confirmed when we lived in Martinsville. Oh, I was okay. confirmed at the cathedral in Indianapolis, oh, okay. which yeah. was all quite mysterious. Yeah. <laughs> and. Um, well, of course, the, obviously the community's changed since you left in 1949. They hadn't purchased the uh, Kisselman property at that point, had they, when you left? No, uh, they, they, no. They purchased it in 49, but probably a little after you left. Well, yes, it might have. Uh, I was aware of it, but I don't remember just exactly which yeah. point. Uh, but. Uh, did you have any problems being a Catholic in Muncie? Was there any? Well, that's, you know, I, I can't uh, remember anything. Um, and, you know, as far as that goes, I was just a youngster. Yeah, and right. I, so I don't know. Um, Did your father ever talk about it? Any? Well, he had experienced problems prior to that. In, well, before coming. Oh, yes. The Ku Klux Klan was trying right. to get him out of Martinsville High School. Yeah. And, uh, the uh, principal, I mean, the superintendent of schools. Uh, but he know. had no problem here in Muncie with that. No, I, at least not to not my any, knowledge. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes, I think that was. Uh, I think he was one of the first Newman sponsors. Newman called. I sponsors. believe so. Uh huh. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I think there was some other, some other Catholic on the faculty, but I can't remember. For when sure. did When did he retire then? Um. Let's see, I was. I met him in Dolores 66. Would know I, I met him in '66, so he, he was retired after that. So. Uh huh. Um, yeah, I was in 
you know, in the community. You were already in residence life when he. Uh, yes, he and I can't him. remember just which. Well, it's not important. I just wondered. Yeah. He, he taught here long enough for pension anyway. Yes. And probably under the state. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, so he, re he so he had problems in where he was before, but no problems in months. Yeah. He didn't encounter any. Mm -hmm. All I remember about his retiring was that he wasn't ready to retire. Yeah. The state. <laughs> yeah, right. The state requirement. Oh, uh, and he was just was in his like prime, six, really. Six, I think. He was in his prime. Yeah. They did let him teach. Uh, uh, they had about that time when the war was over. Right. We had such a great influx of students, right. so he did get to GIs. teach. Yeah, right. uh, yeah. And so he was, you yeah. know, that was. No, and they named, uh, named his dorm after him. So. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. so do you come back to the community on a regular basis, like every year or every several years? Have you come Here? back since? Yeah, since oh, I come to see my, to see the, my sister. Uh, usually, lately I've been managing to come twice a year, and. I may come a lot. You know. So you you can see gradually the changes yes. that have taken yes. place in uh, Muncie since that point. Yes. Right. As far as the rest of the city, um, you know, I my uh, knowledge of Muncie was just around here right, and exactly. downtown. And uh, what about the parish? Have you uh, noticed any changes other than the physical? Or you probably haven't talked to enough people to really. Well, you know, I don't really know that much about. Uh, of course, the church itself, that was a big difference. Yes, that was a big know. yes, and, and Father Sear was so, you know, took me all around to show me everything so one time when I was home. I, I was in Colorado for many years, and, and so then it was a once a year right, yeah. thing, and uh, I can remember him taking me around to see the new building and explaining everything. So. Well, it took him a long time, from 1930 to, uh, yeah. to 19, well, 65 when they probably uh -huh. went for the first man, so, yeah. and then 68 when it was, when it was uh, uh, consecrated. Yeah. So, uh, okay, you were in a parish then from the time you were 10 years old until you went away to religious life from 1936 to 1949, so like 13 years. Yes, uh, I put 12 and a half, yeah. September 36 to January of 49. So anyway, that's yeah. and uh, well then you remember the basement church then definitely yes um, I can remember that the altar was at the west end of our basement church oh at the west end yes mm -hmm. uh, when we first came and it was still there when my sister died um, I remember we were sitting at that end and my mother was ill and that was in forty one. And uh, so after that, sometime, I don't remember just how much. So in 1956, they put no hole on it. And then I remember the other basement church. And at that point, the altar was. Oh, well, I'm thinking of yeah. the. Yeah, right, yeah. The old so that, school. Yeah, then they, they moved it to the east. That's of, right. So it really, was really in the west side. At the beginning. Uh -huh. And then uh, where did you enter from the, did you, did you enter from the east side or the west side? Originally, you know, yeah. we entered from the, you went around and down. No, we went from the, uh, we entered right from uh, Nichols oh, okay. Avenue. You know, you went okay. up, went uh, down the steps, and and then you worked your way up to the, yeah. uh -huh. and then, um, yeah. Now, C.M. Chisholm wrote to uh, my father Sear uh, when he first came here and wanted to talk to him. And he was recommending that he use uh, oil to heat the church because it's not as dirty. And then he wrote to uh, one of the board of trustees members, uh, Broderick, I believe, and uh, told him that he hopes that they build a nice church because he has this nice property around here and he wants to look at something nice. <laughs> I <laughs> hope said, it was pleased. He said, I hope that it was landscape. But I mean, they never did really finish the top of it, you know, but then. C.M. Kisselman died a few months after that. He died in, in the 1930s. So, uh -huh. uh, you know, it was, yes. but it was interesting to see those two yes, letters well in the, the archive. The building was brought to a sudden halt, wasn't you know, it? Right, right because of depression. Yes, and, uh -huh. and uh, that was uh, Monsignor's dream, though, to get yeah, that. 35 church. years, it, was, it took a lot of persistence. Yeah, 35, was, yeah. yeah. So it was on the west side, and I, I and the altar was the same one that was, uh, it came from St. Lawrence, the altar. I didn't know where, 
Yeah, you know, he came from St. Lawrence, and then when Monsignor Sear retired, he, he, had, his a, little he, had, chapel. he had it to shorten it. Oh, is that it? Uh -huh. and yes. Vivian Sear, yep. and she's going to give that to uh, St. Lawrence, back to St. Lawrence. Oh, really? School. Oh, well, that's uh, nice. Yeah. Uh, so. Yes, I, uh, she always, I've usually gone out to see her sometime when I'm home, and uh, we always go in and see the chapel. Yeah, <laughs> Father, I remember when yeah. Father, the first time that I got to visit him, at his new home there, he had uh, he showed us all around, and it was he was very proud of the fact that he had the altar and, and the organ. Yes, and uh, there's a kneeler there. Yes, I remember the old organ. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he had some statues that the children gave him at the foot of the stairs there that goes up. And oh, he's got a beautiful study up there uh, and everything too. So. Uh, yes. Yeah, he had quite a. He had quite a powerful voice. You probably remember his sermons, and I mean, he had a very powerful speaking voice. I yes, think. yes, and uh, uh, I think sometimes maybe they were a little long for the general, <laughs> yeah. you know. But uh, I didn't think he could do anything wrong. <laughs> and it's, uh, so he, he instructed every Sunday then. Uh, yes, we had all the uh, children and, and uh -huh, we had our few few rows of us up in the front of of the chapel at the west end there. And, um, it was before the Mass that he would have? Yes, right before the 10, I think it was 1030 Mass. Yeah. Oh. And, uh, well, there weren't any stained glass windows or anything like that in it. We were just plain glass windows oh, no. up to the little above the... Yeah. No, kind of... Uh, yeah, I have a picture of him by the old altar uh, saying Mass. Do you? That was from uh, Vivian did it. Did it well, uh-huh. Yeah, so... Okay. Well, I suppose being in the parish to play a part in, in your life uh, uh, while you were here. I mean, were, were your friends at birth? Were they from the parish too, or had others? Were there any? There were a few there? of us. Yes. Uh, well, you would meet them in catechism, I knew them. Yes, and uh, one of the girls, Martha Sauer, went to St. Lawrence. So I knew her in the parish, but uh, she didn't. I didn't go to school with her except I think one year she came back to Burris, and but her her father had uh, graduated from Central, and she kind of wanted to go to to yeah. Central. But and she went to St. Lawrence uh, Parish School before that. So was there she, were was just she like your best friend or something. No, or? not she was one of them. One you know, of them, yeah. uh, we were the same class, uh, but there were only a very few of us. Uh, John O'Neill, Martha. Um, so there really weren't too many Catholics. Yeah, and that, um, so. so <laughs> can't think of some of the others. There were just about four of us in our class that were Catholic. Did you ever keep track of them after you? Did you lose track of them or they still uh, around? Or? I uh, I got to see uh, one of them. We had a, a verse. Birth bash, they called yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> some years back. And uh, um, Martha, I had seen when I'd come back to visit, I'd see her at mass after mass. And, um, what was her last name again? Sauer. S, -S, -S, -S O W A R. Okay. Her father had the uh, Rivoli and the oh, really? and the uh, what's the other one? Uh, Can't remember. I'm thinking yeah, the yeah, beginning with an S. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Strand, yeah, River Lane Strand, yes. So he owned those, did he? Yes, uh, oh. and, uh, um, but I think, you know, just... So there was a Catholic businessman then. Yes, <laughs> yes, we had just very few of us, yeah. and uh, trying to think. Well, you remember uh, when you first came here, did Monsignor or Father Sear have any assistance? No, no, he didn't so have any assistance. Uh, Father Fosselman was his first yeah. assistant. You have some pictures of him. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, we were, he was very well liked and just very nice. It was a big relief, I think, for Father to have, have some else. help. Yeah. Yes, and then Father um, Charles Muller came. Yeah, was the next one. Yeah, we have pictures of him too. And, uh, he was our Newman Club. He, by that time, I was at college, and he was our Newman Club sponsor, or uh, director, or whatever. And uh, 
Was there, okay, you finished Burris here, okay. And then I went to Ball State. Oh, you went to Ball State? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, did you uh, graduate from there then? Or yes. Did you, or you no, did I graduated from there. Oh, okay. And, uh, when did you graduate? In 43. 43, uh -huh. okay. Now there was what was your what did you major in? In college of yeah. in dietetics, home ec, oh, okay. home special, I think it was called. Yeah. And then I went to Good Samaritan Hospital in Cincinnati for and my dietetic in yeah. internship, and that's where I got the idea that maybe I could be a sister. <laughs> What, is that, uh, were they the, the nuns that were at uh, Good Samaritan? Yes. Uh -huh. Sisters of Charity, right? Yes, uh -huh. okay. Sisters of Charity of Cincinnati. Yeah. Uh, we were founded way back in, well, Mother Seton actually, right. Right. the beginning of it. Yeah. Came to Cincinnati in 1852, I believe it was. So well, my, my wife went to Seton High did School. Did she really? And she went to Mount St. Joseph. Oh, for goodness yeah. sake. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, so when I. Uh, you know, was there as a postulant and all. The uh, college was all part of the right. mother house set up, and now and we have, have a, a very they nice. They still have the old building there. Oh, yes, we building. used it. Uh, it's well used for some offices right. and for uh, the dormitory space is always, <laughs> somebody's always there. Uh, they have a lot of meetings and Well, when they started to expand, they, I think the nursing was one of those things that they wanted to stress back in. 70s or 80s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. Uh, I, uh, of course, didn't know anything about the college at that time. The way I uh, really, I think, uh, found my way to the Sisters of Charity was that they took us to, uh, and in our internship, they brought us out to the college to have a little picnic with the home ec students out there. And then at the end of the day, um, well, I was thrilled. I mean, I just thought it was a beautiful place. But at the end of the day, we went into chapel for benediction. We always had benediction at 5 o'clock. And, and uh, oh, I was just thrilled, you know, coming from the basement church yeah, and right. seeing this yeah. beautiful, big, it's a really big church chapel. <laughs> More than a chapel, really. It's more like a basilica. And um, so I had been. Um, uh, with about five sisters in our internship class, different orders, and uh, got to know them, you know, as friends and realized that sisters were human, you know, and all that. <laughs> I had never had any contact, really, with sisters. And, and, uh, so you went into the order after your internship? Yes. Uh -huh. How long was your internship? It was just a year. year. Mm -hmm. And then, then I, went, then I finished in the fall of uh, 48, and then I went and the February group of postulants. We had two groups, September and February. At Mount St. Joseph. At so. Mount St. Joseph. Uh -huh. And you stayed there then, but you were transferred, you were in, say, in Colorado, you said? Well, that was my first uh, assignment, yes. It was my first mission. That was in the hospital, too? Uh, mm -hmm. and, yes. And then. How long did you back in Cincinnati? Was that, did you go from Colorado back to Cincinnati then? Or? Well, I was, I was, uh, Colorado for, I can stop to figure out how many years, but a good part of my community. And uh, then I was in Dayton for a few years, and I was in Michigan at one of our hospitals oh, there, and I was at Good Sam in Cincinnati for three years also. And uh, so. So that was your last assignment then, uh, uh, in Cincinnati? Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. You had. Uh, what about? Is there anything? Do you remember any social events that they had at the Paris? They used to have a house there, didn't they? Yes. Uh, On the south side. Uh huh. And wasn't that Jason Jackson? Yeah, right. And yeah. then an empty lot next yeah, to it, and right. we had our parish uh, picnic or parish ice cream social or whatever. Because everything was there. And CYO meetings for the people that were in that. Uh huh. And, uh, we had our vacation school there one summer, Miss. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, vacation Bible school. Yeah, mm -hmm. they just started that. Uh, not when I first went, but later on. Where did uh, Newman meet? Did uh, they met there too? I think. Uh, 
at least late, at least part of the time. I don't know. I can't think of enough. Were there many uh, Catholic students in that? No. I, uh, see, I was, when I was in, uh, I, I can't really remember any meetings when I was a student. It seems like it was later that it developed. I remember Dad was a sponsor, but I, it, uh, Some of those figures are getting a little bit hazy. I have to stop and <laughs> yeah, sure. figure just when what was. <laughs> but, uh, but they did have a Newman program, which your father wasn't. Uh, he, he was like was a, he the sponsor at that point, a faculty sponsor of it? Um, I think so, or, or advisor or yeah, something. Right, something like that. I think yeah. he was because yeah. there's so few yeah, Catholic right. on, fac yeah. on the faculty. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But, uh, so you remember the ice cream social? Oh, ice cream socials or any kind of a picnic, or and then they had the bingo there. Yeah, bingo was a big, big thing. <laughs> yeah, poor father's trying to pay off the debt. <laughs> yeah, that helped build the church. Yes, <laughs> yes, and of course that was, uh, as far as any attitudes, that was frowned upon by a uh, number of uh, people in the community. You know, it was considered. Yeah. gambling and so yeah, yeah. but he just stuck his guns yeah. <laughs> he didn't put anybody in jail no. <laughs> uh, but uh, came close sometimes but not <laughs> <laughs> I don't know <laughs> but, uh, um, any special liturgy that you remember that uh, well I, I always have uh, remember the 40 hours was not always a big event you know yeah. and, uh, I can remember going early in the morning on Holy Saturday when Father was, you know, getting close to the end of all the yeah. his Holy Saturday prayers, and uh, so wonderful that we have that now in the yeah. at the vigil time, isn't it? Yeah. So we're, um, and did I mention forty hours? Pardon? Did I mention yeah. forty? Yeah. Did Father ever come around and visit people from the parish? Did he? Uh, well, truthfully, I doubt if he had much time. Yeah, <laughs> for I, I guess priests never did, really. I don't. I can't remember that he did. But uh, I know he was very upset about uh, the book, the Lynn did. Uh, is that right? Yeah, Middletown. And yes. Uh -huh. And he wrote a uh, critique. Is of, that right? Of it. And uh, the Sunday visitor, and complaining about the lack of Catholic representation uh -huh. you know, in the book, you know. Uh huh. And there were a number of prominent Catholic uh, businessmen in town who became members of Board of Trustees. Is that right? Uh huh. And Broderick. And oh, yeah. oh, that's and right. Uh -huh. and a number of that's others. That's right. Uh huh. The Brodericks. Yes, they're very important yeah. <laughs> to our parish, wasn't yeah. they? Yes. But um, you had there the what part belonging to the parish played in our life. Well, it was a very important yeah. part. You know, anything that was happening at church, we were there. <laughs> and, and you read uh, the you would read the announcements out and, and uh, stuff like that. At the oh, yeah. not no, I don't remember that. But uh, I just mean anything you yeah. know, forty hours or any kind of a novena or. Anything like that, we were. You said your mother went to mass every, yeah. probably, almost every day, I suppose, or at least very well, frequently. As frequently as she could. could. I didn't, of course, because we. It was a matter of getting to school. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. Except on Saturdays, where we'd try to. When we moved up to, uh, McKinley, North McKinley, the day my mother died, we had walked, over to mass. And uh, came home and. She was fine, yeah. uh, apparently, and I went to town to buy a birthday present. I was going to a party, and I came home, and she was critically ill. Oh. Uh, gallbladder attack. She had had some, I think, and we just kind of didn't pay much attention to it, you know. And mm -hmm. this was that's where you, so you lived on McKinley, is that, that's where you Yes, lived? that was, we moved there, um, I think we were only on Jackson Street. Uh, 
Did you live closer before then? Well, on, on Jackson Street, we were oh, very close, you oh, know. You were on Jackson. Well, yes, just a block down the house is uh, yeah. been remodeled. It looks real nice. <laughs> and oh, my yeah, mother was. Still, it's still there? Oh, the, yes. It, oh. It's been uh, to, right on the corner of Jackson and Tally. Oh, I'll have to take a look at that. On the north side of the yeah, on street. On the north side. Uh huh. Yeah. And uh, she was, my mother was so delighted to be close to church yeah. when we were living in Martinsville. A very small town, 5,000, and, and uh, she, we had, uh, had had a car, and as I said, somebody wrecked our car, so we'd have to walk to the little church for Sunday Mass. It was, you know, quite a little walk, but she was so happy that the church was right down the street. <laughs> well, when you moved on McKinley, how, was it still fairly close to church? Was it that part of McKinley, that, uh, when you moved to McKinley? Well, it was, it was up right across from the Science Building. It oh. got demolished <laughs> oh, yeah. recently, uh, the house. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was in Which a corner. Which is now Burkhart, Burkhart Building. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. And there's uh, the yes. music school was there. Uh -huh. the parking and it belonged. We, we, uh, the people who had been there before were the Burks, <laughs> B-U-R-K. Yes. Well, that, that was, was wonderful for Dad. Very convenient for your father. Oh, and wonderful. And yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, that wasn't. That was pretty close to Burroughs. That was very. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was about, you know, about the same, actually. Yeah. But, but um, the, you know, the parish played a very significant part, I think, in our life. But, you know, uh, anything that was going on, we were there. <laughs> so, I mean, any kind of devotions or yeah. anything. But, uh, your father, uh, he taught American history, was yes, it? Yes, uh, and uh, Latin American. Latin American uh -huh. history, yeah. yeah. I've often wished that I had, at some point, uh, gone to one of his classes, classes you know, just uh, audited it. I didn't. Yeah, I believe he said he had to, he used to stand up higher so people could see. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't think of him as being short. Well, this were larger classes, you know, so uh -huh. he could, uh, Is that his, right? his voice would project. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, he voice. had a hard time. He had a, yeah, he had a yes, hard time. Yes, projecting his so voice, yeah. Voice. But um, you asked, yeah, I mean, on one thing about the uh, uh, old church, yeah. one thing that was <laughs> the folding chairs. <laughs> oh, old, the folding chairs. They were, uh, you know, they yeah. were ready to sit on, and I think they were stationary as but I mean, they were just that type of chair, yeah, yeah. and uh, all kind of noisy, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Was there any leaking in the church or water? Problems? I don't remember anything. Yeah. There may have been, you know. Well, they do have them now. I just wonder. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's too bad. See, they built they built no hole on top of the old church. And that's right. Uh -huh. yeah. One and that was built in 1930, another 1956. Uh -huh. Because that was uh, supposed to be the basement of the school, I think. School, yeah. yeah. Which no. <laughs> yeah. The school had to be built before you could build the church, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> that was what it. Well, actually, it, they did finally start this school before they built the main church. Oh, I, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. but, so he still had the basement church, but he never got that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So all that, when you were living there then, as a young child, then all that property, that was, those were still the Kitzelman, that was still the Kitzelman property then, all that, all the only thing that they yeah. had was that small area there. Mm -hmm. where, yeah. Yes, they were. In fact, when I'd come home to visit the uh, first couple of times, uh, well, I wasn't home that much, but I mean, when I got to come, uh, I stayed with the sisters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the, oh, in the uh, uh -huh. mansion. In yes, the, by that time, we had. Yeah, they remodeled that. It's very nice. And, uh, oh, have they? Yeah. Now, did the uh, retired priest There's live There's only there? one priest there. <laughs> One priest living in his mansion. Aww. Too bad. It's very nice. Very nice. Aww. They have mass there in the morning. Do they? Or he has mass generally on Tuesday at nine o'clock. Well, uh, 
that was, yes, that was uh, quite exciting to get to see, you get to see the inside of the house. <laughs> When you were, uh, probably, you never saw any of the Kisselman family. Did you ever see any of the Kisselman family around when? No, I didn't. Uh, so you I never walked through there? You weren't allowed to walk through well, there? Well, I never did, well, there anyway. Was a fence. There's a fence there, anyway, right? Uh -huh. right. But one of, uh, one of their grandchildren uh, was in my brother's class, Betty Crapo. And uh, uh, Ann Crapo. Ann Crapo was in my class, except that just just about one year, and then she went to some girls' school in Indianapolis. I forget the name of the school. And, uh, but we. Uh, but she lived in the Crapo mansion. Outside. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. In fact, I we had a uh, you know one time we had a party for our class out there. And, oh really? Yes. Uh huh. And, and one time I got to go out uh, to uh, you know just by the mansion. Okay. Well, um, so you saw the Crapo estate when it was really kind of in its prime. Oh yes. Uh, uh, we, we, it was open for for an open house when they were trying to sell it. Oh, is that and right? It was uh, very impressive. Yes. Uh -huh. um, but one time, somehow, I was in the car. I guess uh, Mrs. Crapo had picked up the girls from school, and um, I must have been when I was going out to have. Supper with them that one time, and we went past some place on uh, Minatrista. No, not on Minatrista. Is it Riverside that mm -hmm. runs along? Mm -hmm. right, yeah, okay. And I remember that Betty, the older girl, pointed out that that house was where they used to live. She wanted me to know that it was just an ordinary house, you know. <laughs> I mean, that was. <laughs> she was. Uh, <laughs> she was a nice person, Betty. She lived in the little garden house for a good yeah. many years. I yeah, that, do you know uh, anything about yeah, she it? She and her, her son, I guess, right, is that they lived there. Uh, what was the name? I forget the name of the family. Uh, the daughter of, uh, okay, Mr. Uh, Kisselman's daughter is, what was her name now, who married Fred Crapo. Yeah, I don't remember and then her first the daughter, name. And the daughter was Betty, was it? Red, the yes. daughter was Betty. Yes. Uh, and who was, who was Anne then? Anne was uh, the next one, and then she was my age, and then I uh, forget the name of the younger one. Uh huh. A couple years younger. Yeah, that's what, Betty what they and called Anne the, and, uh, the uh, Benedict and the Scholastic. So they lived in that little that little house there. Uh -huh, I remember that, but I never did see Betty again. After. That was after the property was purchased, wasn't it, that they lived there? Yes, I think right. so. Yeah, I think some, so. There was some split there in the property. I don't uh -huh. understand how it happened. I can't, uh -huh. you know, but... Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was... Uh, Well, so indirectly, at least you had some contact with the Kitzelman family through the Crapo. Uh, <laughs> he was uh, he was the one that was really in charge of the Kitzelman Wire Company, Fred Crapo. Yes. Uh -huh. He married the daughter of uh, Sam. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. and, uh, you ought to go over and uh, ask uh, your parents about seeing the inside of that oh. restoration. I think you know oh. they, they would be. I think they'd be happy to show it to you. It's they, really worth. It's really worth looking. Did yeah. they do a lot? Oh yeah, it got it got a historic preservation award. Oh, I see. It made on all kinds of apartments, <coughs> and you can see the chapel. The chapel is really nice. Mm -hmm. So you really ought to just, you know, tell Father you just mm. would it be okay if you take a look. Mm. I'll mm. do that. I don't do it this time. <laughs> Keep that in mind. But, uh, But, you know, coming from Martinsville, uh, Muncie seemed like a yeah. pretty big town to me, you know. <laughs> we had a little tiny church in Martinsville. It wasn't a whole lot bigger than from there to there. <laughs> I wonder if it's still there. A lot of those churches, they... Yes, yeah, uh, or at least there. it was maybe, goodness, uh, probably at least 20 years ago, if not more, that we went. Um, we were driving around, I think, in... Emma, Daddy's wife, was uh, with us, and we went down um, 
just to do a little uh, reminiscing, I guess. And we went, thought we'd go to the little church. Well, it was there, mm -hmm. but it was uh, had been bought by some Protestant uh, mm -hmm. denomination, and uh, we found that they had a you know a new Catholic church, the other further up. Not, uh, Martinsville, I think, became kind of a a place where people who worked in Indianapolis but didn't want to live in the city. It was just about 30 miles. And so they, but I meant to ask you, how many, how many were in your family? Instead, well, there were five children. Five children. Uh, my Dolores was the oldest. Dolores was the oldest. And then we had a, a, a sister who was not even two years, she was just about two years younger, Carola. And uh, she was never well, and uh, she died in 1939. So that was after we had just been here a couple of How years. How old she? was very young. When yes, she was. just uh, well, Dolores could tell you she would have been probably just 20. I don't know whether she was 21 yet or not. But Did she die in Muncie? Yes, uh -huh. she Mary's. died at Ball Memorial. In St. Mary's Parish. Yes. Uh -huh. Her name would be in the book, in, in the death book. Uh huh. As to depending upon when she in 1939. Uh huh. Probably and um, that her name was Carola. Carola, C A R O L A. Mm -hmm. um, and Daddy's uh, brother's name was Carl. Oh, sorry. sorry. And uh, it was kind of. Pe mm -hmm. And it so was. Dolores, and then. Uh, Carola. Carola and, then and then the boys, uh, Hubert, Jerome. Who was it? Hubert, Hubert and Jerome. Jerome. And you said they were twins? or Yes. Uh, or were, uh, identical twins? No, or, uh, very fraternal, different. <laughs> fraternal twins. Yes, fraternal twins. Are they still alive? Um, Jerome is. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Hubert died just three years ago. Where, do, where, does, uh, where does the one that's surviving live? He lives in Indianapolis. Oh. Uh -huh. Do you see him very often? Uh, not often, no. Uh, I saw him recently at uh, a wedding of one of Hubert's grandchildren. <laughs> And uh, they they haven't made too many trips to the Mount. They came to see me, I think, twice since I've been there. But so he grew up in the big, too, then. He oh yes, the uh -huh. yeah. They were they were high school age. In fact, they were stars on the basketball team. At, uh, <laughs> the Shiver Twins. Did they go to Burris? Yes, they were in on the team the year they went to the state for the first time, oh. and uh, that was quite a exciting. <laughs> what, what year was that? That uh, would have been. The late 30s? Or something? Yeah, um, see, they graduated in 39, so okay. I kind of think it was that year, 38 to 39, or it might have been. Well, when you go to when you go to Burris Gym, uh, well, this is really the uh, it's a ball gym. Uh -huh. Oh yes. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. And they have the banners of all the championships Do that, that uh -huh. Burris has won. Uh -huh. It goes all the way around. My goodness. Track well, and field. They had dreams of basketball. Volleyball is what, really. Well, they had dreams of winning the state, and they were a very good uh, team. And uh, they got a little bit too cocky, I yeah. think, and got put out by a yeah. Royerton, I think it was, you know. Yeah. Pride doesn't pay. <laughs> oh, shoot, that was, oh, my, I remember my sister Carola crying. <laughs> we were all there. And our, we had some cousins on my mother's side that lived in Indianapolis. And, they were at home listening to it, you know. <laughs> we stopped to see them afterwards. <laughs> it was a big deal. Yeah. So it's okay. So you have uh, Dolores and Carola, the two twins, and then me. And you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're the youngest. Of yes, them. I'm the youngest. I'm the baby of the family. <laughs> at age 80, it's kind of a. <laughs> oh shoot. Uh, just trying to see if I had put some things down that you didn't. Um, Emma was uh, your stepmother. Oh, uh, yes. Did, oh, that was such a blessing for me. When, when did he marry Emma? Uh, boy. That's the one I remember. I remember Emma. Of course, I wouldn't have remembered your mother. No. Um, let's see, it was after I entered. It was after you went to. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I hadn't known her before. Um, well, I think I met her one time during the summer. Uh, she was a teacher in Gary, Indiana, and she had taken some of Daddy's classes. That's how oh, we, uh, oh, that's how, how they met. met. Uh huh. And uh, well, I could figure it out if I sat in here a yeah. few minutes. But anyway, they they had uh, some very happy years together. And uh, he died, you know, from a heart attack. Just 
real shock. He had had some symptoms, you know, and had been, yeah. the doctor had been taking care of him, but. Uh, I but must have met him just shortly before he died. I met him at a mall right? uh -huh. at a carry in or something. We talked. Mm -hmm. I think I maybe saw him a couple of other times. But mm -hmm. Yes, that was, uh, was quite a shock. Yeah, Rob said that he, even when he retired, he started teaching courses oh. about uh, church councils, things like that. Was that at the period? Well, I tell you, at first, you know, when he retired, they called him back to do some of the, take care of some of the extra freshman right. large classes. But then, um, yes, he did an extensive study um, of the councils of the past, mm -hmm. the history of all the church councils. And he uh, gave talks to the Noon Club, and then he, uh, the, at Hartford City, oh, I can't think of the name of the order, I'm, I'm beginning to, <laughs> <laughs> there was an order of priests that I don't think are there anymore, religious order, at Hartford City, and I know the name, but um, they, um, one of them had come over because it had been advertised. Had come over too, yeah. and so then they asked if uh, he would come. And he would come, and he gave a whole series to their novices and uh, the priests that were there. And uh, that, you know, it just. Uh, I remember in the seventies, I believe they were still because I had, they asked me that I gave one, and it was they wanted the councils so that must have been a carryover from what. Is Something that right? Uh -huh. yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, he he certainly didn't want to did retire. They name, did they name the, the dormitory after him while he was still alive? Did he was he alive? To uh, you that? know what? <laughs> um, I don't remember. He, no, that. they did, but he didn't find out about it. Well, he didn't find no. out. No. The day he died, uh, well, I mean, they didn't do it that day, but the next, very soon after, uh, they came to tell him, you know, that that had been done. And she said, you know, he would have just been so upset if he had known it. Oh, he, he would have gotten real upset about that. He wouldn't want his name on it. No. <laughs> so, That's uh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, she said that. that he, he would have been quite, oh, my, you know. <laughs> so he was a very humble man. Uh, and. Where, I know where did he go to school? Where did he go to school? Well, he grew up in the little town of Millhausen, and I don't know where. Uh, I know that he went to uh, Dayton to the Brothers of Mary yeah, for yeah. some point, so it must have been like a uh, kind of a equivalent of high school, yeah. a kind of a pre-college type of yeah. whatever. and. Uh, uh, and then he went, you know, to Indiana State to get degrees and uh -huh. to, and to uh, Indiana University. But I, I don't know. Uh, my understanding was that it was his, uh, like his school. high school. He, he, taught high, he taught in high school then. He went afterward. He taught in high school. Yes, uh, he, his. You know. yeah. When you went to Ball State, it was Ball State. Teachers, teachers College. college. Mm -hmm. Was it called Normal School or Ball State Teachers? It Ball had State been teachers. Normal School. Ball State Teachers College. Yeah, at that point it was Ball State Teachers. So you were trained uh, to be a teacher in, in, home, in home ec or was it? Uh, yeah, that was mostly the, yeah. And uh, I didn't really want to teach. <laughs> and uh, I was interested in the yeah. field and so they had the, you know, they had the requirements, the required courses for the, for the other stuff. So. Were there any required history courses you had to take? So you missed oh, taking a course with your father. I didn't you? get, no, I, I don't remember that there were any required. I guess there were, but. Uh, but you didn't take any, I you, didn't, didn't, you didn't have any history classes. I didn't class. have any history classes under him, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, I would love to have, uh, I wish I had audited the class yeah. later on. He, he probably would have been uncomfortable if you were taking it for credit. Oh, time. yeah, <laughs> right, no, and he would have been <laughs> yeah. even more uncomfortable. Yeah. But my sister had to go through that in high school. Yeah. She had him for classes. <laughs> but no, I, I just, uh, you know, heard so many wonderful things about his classes. I just wish I had 
been able, and I, I could have audited one, but I didn't have the sense to, to do that. <laughs> so when you were there, there was what was called the science building. Yes. Uh -huh. And the administration building. And the arts building was the newest thing. The arts building was And that there. was his building. And, and he loved uh, it. <laughs> was Sina. Uh, yes, and Sina there. was there. And yeah. Elliot was being built when Elliot we was came. Across the street. Okay. And yeah, they were working on that in 36 when we so came. So where did you have your classes then? In the administration building or in the science building? Or, uh, or in the arts building? Well, we had, I remember having uh, uh, Spanish class that was in the arts building, and uh, the history, the uh, uh, yeah, the history, social science, I mean, classes were in the arts building, and then some in the science building. And, uh, well, and then in the uh, in the ad building, we had classes in, the in there. Uh -huh. That was what was there. <laughs> Quadrangle there. Yeah, it was quite quite different. <laughs> <laughs> yes, when indeed. You come back, that yes, the art one. You have you driven around campus now to see how it's expanded? Yes. It's, it's enormous, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Well, when I after it had you know when Daddy was still living, any time I'd come home, I we'd go around and and then mm -hmm. Emma took me uh, different times too when she was living. She was such a, it was a wonderful thing for uh, Daddy was it. still, you know, young at heart to yeah. to be left a widower and yeah. it was, uh, they had many happy years together. So he had the, his office in the, he, he in had the office arts in building. Arts building. Uh, oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Have you been to the art museum there? Have you seen how that's changed? No, I haven't. Oh, I you should. should. Oh. oh. The entrance is, uh, they've changed the entrance now. Oh. And it's on Riverside. Oh, I see. You go up ste steps to get to it. It's very much I expanded. was there one time when, after I entered the community, um, I can't remember just at what point it was. Well, see, they changed it all, and uh -huh. they, they moved out departments, so they have much of the building. So it, it's very much different. Oh, well, yeah. I'll have to, I have the lost The science building that you're, you probably would have had classes in the science building. Yes. Because yeah. yep. that was completely changed over. Uh huh. Got it. Yeah. Uh, it's called the Burkhart building. That's, you wouldn't recognize the inside of that either. Uh, and of course, the administration building has been mm -hmm. modified too. Yes, well, I really should, shouldn't I? <laughs> Where was the library? The library was back um, in the same area as the. Um, at the arts building, you know, back at that. Oh, okay. On that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I asked you, okay, when you went to Ball State, you said there weren't there not many Catholics uh, there at the. Uh, no, there were a few of a us. Few. You know, uh -huh. uh, but as you said, you didn't really run in any sort of anti Catholic attitudes or anything like no, that. No, I don't think so. And your father didn't mention anything? He really. didn't mention anything. He had. Had experiences earlier on, but uh, yeah. I don't think that that was. Uh, I just know that uh, it was. Uh, Nothing came out in class or anything like that. The professor would say or anything. Like I that. don't think so. Yeah. But uh, do you remember any sermons of my father's here? Did he have anything that he? Well, I couldn't. You know. Um, it's I anything specific, that. but yeah. but I do remember that they were wonderful sermons, and you know he maybe got a little bit long yeah, sometimes yeah. for some people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he they were his voice was so strong. Yeah, powerful, yeah. even to the end of his life. Yeah, yeah. Voice. Yes, I'd always go out go out to see him after I. One time Dolores had him come over here for lunch. He and Vivian and and uh, he's so dear. I just my patron saint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just, uh, he was, uh, uh, yeah, and then Father Fosselman came. That was his first assistant. And, uh, I don't know whether his picture is in the new directory or not. You know, the it, new be, it must be. Yeah, we had a history. Yeah, because, and Father Muller's. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Father yeah. Muller took the Newman Club. I mean, we went. <laughs> 
to uh, Newman Convention out in um, Houston, I think it was. A car full of us, you know. Oh, you went to? Uh, drove out. Oh. You know, Father Sear, and you probably know this, that, that the first language he spoke was French. I didn't know that. Yeah, I know that it's a French name. It's and a French Canadian. Yeah, family. I knew that. Yeah. Uh, in the archives, we have his catechism. Oh, from really? A boy, and oh. it's in French. Oh. <laughs> well, I know that uh, Vivian told me that. Uh, hmm. French Canadian that's up for canonization. I can't. Or, uh, yeah, related uh, related to, to them. Uh -huh. Who is that? Uh, yeah, she told me that too. I forgot. Uh, uh, she gave yeah. me the whole yeah, family history. I have those. Oh, uh, really? Is that right? The family tree and stuff oh, like that. Uh, my father did a family history for our, oh, did our he? family. Yeah, and uh, it, uh, he did that after he retired, and he was, uh, I think it was his grandfather that had come from Germany, and uh, he had, you know, knowledge of all the older generation, and, excuse me, he uh, did it all handwritten, everything, you know, he, he sent letters out to all the different people that uh, were living and asked for their branch of the family, and now it's been kept up over the years, and I uh, still have his original handwritten copy and uh, some of the letters that he sent out, mm -hmm. but now they have everything on the computer. And now it's much easier. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. and even down in downtown Muncie, you can go to the genealogy. It's much easier now than it was in those days. Yes. Uh -huh. Do you have any relatives back there that you've ever, that he ever kept in touch with? It, was no. Too long, it was too long ago. I, I think, think everybody uh, that he was able to, you know, know about was over here. Yeah. Uh, yeah I think maybe there was somebody who mentioned that they didn't know just what happened to that person, but that, that was in this country, I think. Assume that he had met up with an accident or something oh, really? that he had been, he had gone with uh, some farm police or something to a market. He never, and in those days, I guess it was hard to find out things like that. Dr. Lafollet was interested in German history. Yes. He had a number of books. When he died, we had the. Oh, you, your here. father. Oh, uh -huh. Yeah, Lafollet uh, had a lot of German books. And that he obviously read, uh -huh. and uh, an enormous slide collection that he used in his classes uh -huh. before they had color photography. Uh -huh. Big slides. Oh really? I, I don't know whatever happened to them. Uh -huh. but, uh, I don't know whether your father ever used any of those or not. Uh -huh. There used to be a required world civilization class or something that they had had at one time or other. I don't remember when. Oh. Is there anything else? That well, let me look this over a minute. I tried to make some notes. Probably you didn't uh, have much contact with the pastors or the assistants who were here after you left, did you? That you uh, not really. Uh, yeah. You know, Father, uh, I don't remember. When did Father Muller die? I can't remember whether I ever was home before he died, but he was the the assistant when I left. So I don't. But I always went to see Father Sear. <laughs> In that, you got the old church. <clears throat> did they have a, a confessionals in that in the church? Yes. Where were they? They were on the, the on the south side, just a single one box, you know. It was on the south side of the building of the church, and you know the other side was all windows. And uh, this was behind it was uh, on the other side of the wall, you know. When you came down, the, you came down the front so, steps, yeah. and then down in there someplace was a, a restroom, and then 
to the back was the sac I mean, to the west end at that time was the sacristy and and uh, the stairs that steps that went up to okay, the outside. The sacristy was on the, on the south side originally. South side. Okay. You know when it was facing yeah. west. Yeah. Right. And uh, station, I mean when the ch yeah, altar right, was the at the west right end. West. Yeah. And uh, you had to go. Um, you could either go up those steps or, or or the front steps. You had two ways of. Yeah, right. You'd come in by the altar, right? Was there a way you could enter by the south side near the altar? Yeah, that would be where Father. I mean, would it come from Father the, come from yeah. the sacristy yeah. from the yeah. house. Because the sacristy wasn't in that section of the church, though, was it? Was I, the sacristy by the altar? Yeah, it was back there someplace. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and. Uh, they had stations along the, mm -hmm. the and they had windows both on the south and the north side. Mm. Or was it well, south, I don't think there was. It was on the north side. There may have been, but they weren't directly in. Well, the part of the church would have, yeah, part of the church had them, but I'm trying to think where the confessional was. I can't. But most of the windows were on the north side. Yes, uh huh. Uh, yes. And uh, were those casement windows, if I remember right? right. Um, and he lived in the rectory, the old, what they call the old rectory now. Uh huh. And you remember his father? Yes. Moses? Uh, uh, Mr. Sear. Yes, he was sweet. <laughs> he helped dig out part of the basement of the old rectory. Did he? Oh, oh, I had forgotten about him. He yes. had a dog, too. Father Sear had a dog. I forget what his name was now. I don't remember about Mutsi that. Mutsi or something like that. I think <laughs> that I don't, maybe he didn't have one. You yeah, well, he probably did. I just, yeah. right now, I can't yeah. think. I just know I thought Father Sear was the very ultimate. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, when he gave his sermons, he always sounded kind of, you know, stern, or maybe yeah, not yeah. stern, but, but to talk to him, he was just so gentle yeah, and right. kind, and he was a wonderful confessor, and, and he just, uh, and he was always so nice when I'd come back to visit, you know, he was always wanted to show me his new house and everything. <laughs> was anybody like me, were they encouraging you to become in a religious life or you just had the idea? No, I tell you, I, I, I just had never thought about it and we had, uh, Daddy had a number of cousins, of course they were older and I didn't really know them well, but uh, there was, uh, there were two of my cousins, his, his brother's daughters that entered the Franciscans at Oldenburg, but I had no idea of ever becoming a sister. I mean, it didn't, I just didn't, that wasn't for me. I was going to get married and have a big family. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, somehow when I was at uh, Good Samaritan, I had, there were five sisters of different orders in our class. And so I had meals with them in the cafeteria and we uh, lived over in the same dormitory. They had their own little section. And, and uh, so I found out that they were just ordinary human beings, you know, and, <laughs> and that, uh, and how did, I guess... How did you pick that particular order? Because... Of the different orders that were there? Well, it was, oh, you mean, well, let me just finish a minute. Yeah. Um, I, just being with them and getting acquainted with them, right. I realized that they were ordinary yeah. people, you know, yeah. and, uh, and I just, and then seeing all the Sisters of Charity in the chapel, like in the Mass in the morning, and it just, uh, uh, began to grow on me, but what had made me uh, think of going, you know, of the mound at all in the beginning was the fact that they had had a picnic for our internship class, and uh, I went out there and I saw this beautiful chapel and all the novices filing in, you know, and it just, after having been thinking about it a while, that just kind of clinched it, you know, and the uh, priest said, well, you know, if it, uh, if you found that kind of uh, atmosphere there, and uh, don't you think that's got something to do with it, yeah. <laughs> where you should go, because I was thinking of chopping around, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. There were a lot more of them then, too, a lot more nuns. Oh, my, yeah. yes. Yeah, there were close to 50 in our postulant class. So. Do they still wear the habit that they used to, or do you No, know? no, we had a complete change in, um, 
well, I guess it was in the early 60s or some, when a lot of religious were simplifying. Yeah, right. And we had a very attractive, very nice habit, and I that would have been fine with me for the rest of my life. But um, somehow it was uh, uh, just that whole period in the church yeah. when. The picture that appears that you're in in the directory, is that, when was that taken? You had to have it on at that I had a veil on. A veil. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, oh, I know that one. No, I just had a regular suit on because, I, you know, I really wouldn't have, I never really wanted to change from the habit. Yeah. But when you were only one or two or three right. out of the whole yeah, bunch, right. it just seemed yeah. like it wasn't yeah. the right thing to do. Yeah. And so we were... Um, wearing any kind of ordinary, a lot of suits or things, you know, but... Nothing uniform, though, you know? No, no, nothing uniform. And uh, eventually then, they, uh, there was a whole group of sisters, and many of them were, you know, younger sisters that wanted to just be free to yeah. wear anything, contemporary dress, and and so that's what it is now. I think we lost something with... I, it would have been my preference to keep the veil and a, a very simple yeah. something for, except like for days off or when you yeah. were, but that didn't happen. <laughs> no, that's, so what, that's would, what Father Tear would have wanted. Yes, yeah. uh -huh, yeah. yeah. So I, I was uh, wearing the veil right up until just a few years ago. I mean, not the whole habit, yeah, of course, right. but, but um, I stopped wearing it because I was at the mother house. I wasn't, you know, announcing to anybody that I was a sister. <laughs> and it just, uh, it just seemed that it was uh, kind of a, it was kind of uncomfortable and I was always fussing with it and no. I thought, oh, fool, you know, just no. <laughs> you know, do like everybody else now. So, yeah. but I, I've always uh, wished that we hadn't yeah. gone that far. I would rather have had it. So anyway. <laughs> Is there anything else that you'd like to talk Well, I about? think I've probably just a, you know, insignificant, but it, it uh, was the fact that there were so few Catholics, you know, there were only two or three in our class. That, so in Latin class at Christmas time, the, the teacher was at Burris. At, at Burris, Burris uh-huh. She uh, wanted everybody to uh, look up the Christmas story and, and uh, to uh, ask for somebody who would bring in their Bible to read it, you know. Well, a couple of us stuck up our hand, and I won. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, one of the other students objected because it was the, Catholic. you know, not the version that everybody was, you know, and this the yeah. part about um, uh, peace on earth to men of goodwill, yeah. as we have it, and theirs was peace on earth, goodwill to men, you know. <laughs> this was, and this one student, one pupil, said she thought that they should have the version that most of the students were familiar with. And this is Miss Bronworth, Alfred Bronworth, stood up for me and she said, now there's, you know, I don't remember what she said, but anyway, <laughs> she let it be known that my version was perfectly fine. <laughs> so anyway, that's an insignificant little thing that it, uh, it always, uh, <laughs> uh, and, you know, it was interesting, too. We had, uh, Dr. Johnson was a very religious man, and, and uh, we had things that they wouldn't dream of having now. Um, one thing that I can hardly believe is that on Monday morning, I can distinctly remember, and I don't know how many times or how many years or anything, but I can distinctly remember the teacher asking, um, I guess we were about in the sixth or seventh grade, and. Uh, how many had uh, gone to church on Sunday? Now, can you imagine no. them asking that now? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but it. Uh, Who was Dr. Johnson? He was the principal. Uh, uh, principal. Earl Johnson. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh -huh. And the first principal there, I'm sure. And uh, <laughs> it was. Uh, well, at least they taught Latin there. Yeah, oh, yes. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was uh, very important. <laughs> you probably had the classical pronunciation, I imagine. 
Well, uh, instead of medieval, I think church years. Ill, yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the teacher? You said Ron? Alpha Ron North, B R A U N W O or W A, I don't remember which. Well, if that's the only kind of anti Catholic attitude that you uh, ran into, right. there wasn't very much. There no, no, I, I never felt uh, discriminated against. Yeah. We just knew that you were definitely a minority. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was. Uh, in Indiana, that was nothing new. Yeah. So. And as far as religious instruction, I, I made, wanted to make the point that um, at home, that was, you know, very important uh, factor in anything parent, that parent. I wasn't yeah. clear of anything that I wondered about you know yeah. I had to do was ask daddy <laughs> yeah. and I you know I just feel so blessed to have had such a wise and both of my parents yeah. such wonderful good people what was your mother's first name Anna Anna uh, or so you're named after her then or yeah um, well you took um, what was your name before Laura Laura. Laura Ann. Okay, so you took your father and your mother. Yeah, yeah, they named me after themselves, and I, um, I could have kept that, but I sort of, that was kind of special to get some a different name, you know. Oh, right. <laughs> and uh, they had many combinations of male and, I mean, yeah. feminine and. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but the uh, religious instruction thing, that was, uh, any time I had any kind of a question or a misunderstanding or anything. Yeah, your yes, yeah, we were so fortunate. I think my parents were very saintly people. My mother was, uh, but if there was any question about anything, we'll go to your father. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. I presume that the father used the Baltimore Catechism. Yes, that. yeah, it was a Baltimore. Who made me, God uh, made me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the mass was obviously the mass was still in Latin at that. Good mass was in Latin until yes, oh yes. The uh -huh. And father's voice, you know, carried yeah. so well. You really, um, I learned, you know, to sing the Our Father, you know, yeah. just from listening to him. Yeah. <laughs> they still have they have Latin masses at St. Mary's. Once a week. Is that right? They won't have it this week because of the Fourth of July. But they usually week, on Tuesday. On Tuesday evening. Is that right? Oh, I see. In the evening. Mm -hmm. Priest comes over from Indianapolis. Well. It's a special order of priests. Yeah. Is that right? Say Latin mass. Well, my goodness, <laughs> I didn't know there was. And it's the 1962 version of it. Oh, uh huh. Right. They had the special permission to do it. Anything else? Well, I don't think so. I think that's about, about covers it, I think. <laughs> well, I certainly appreciate it. I hope it's not too jumbled. No, no, if there you can uh, You can edit that. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Uh, they'll just transcribe it. Okay. And that's so. Uh, I'll get all my O's and O's and uh, and let's see. And <laughs> Well, see, it's going to be on audio, and then they'll trans the transcription. There'll be a transcription, and what they do with that, I don't know. Uh -huh. and I'll check for the spelling. That's the reason I, you know, but I, I don't think they have that many names that they would have to. Uh, I'll put down some of the priest's names for them so that they know how uh -huh. yeah, to spell it and stuff. Uh -huh. So, well, thank you very much. Well, thank you for the opportunity.